insert cool introduction transition here. Um, no, yeah, that was an awful start, but this is going to be the first video um, installment, I guess, of um, of the mental health journey series. Um, it's going to relate to the questions I no. It's going to relate to the question I asked on Instagram. If anyone has any questions, I'm going to keep it very short and sweet as a first video. Um, yeah, so we'll dive straight into it. Uh, the first question was, does my mental health affect my relationships or my ability to pursue one? Um, short answer, yes. It definitely used to. Um, for most of my life, it has. Um, sadly, um, I'm sure people can sadly relate, as it's a complex that's common. Uh, feels like a burden to have certain issues. Um and therefore, sort of opening up to someone, talking about it, especially in a romantic way, seems sort of like you're throwing your burden onto them. Um, but after I spoke to people a lot, and um, after a lot of reassurance, and just being open about it, and meeting a lot of people that felt the same way, like-minded people with uh, the same sort of issues, and most importantly, after therapy, um, which I would advise, as daunting as it might seem, definitely worth it. Um, I slowly began to learn that, you know, it's not a burden, um, it's, it's sort of part of me and, you know, I can't control it, therefore I shouldn't be judged or crucified for it, therefore if someone pushes me away or um, cuts me off or you know, anything like that, then clearly they're not the right sort of person I need in my life. And I feel like that sort of idea is uh, key to becoming better and removing the toxicity from your life. If someone's not happy to accept you for the way you are, then that's their problem at the end of the day. And it's cutting the bad fruit from the tree, ultimately. Um, yeah, that's certainly what I would advise sort of. I, yeah, I would, that, yeah, I would advise most of that. Just don't, don't force it really. If someone wants to be in your life and someone accepts you for who you are, then brilliant. If not, then they're not the type of person you need in your life. It's not the sort of stress you need. Um, but in relation to that, whether it's impacted my relationships, um, from my experience at uni, they've held events for like-minded people that sort of potentially struggle to uh, meet people, make friendships, etc. Um, university and I'm sure most workplaces do as well, hold events um, that aren't, aren't huge, they aren't, um, sort of spectacular that seem daunting they're, they're very easy to go to and you'll 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 meet like-minded people um yeah and again personally for me um has my mental health affected my relationships um yes in university it still has sadly because it's impacted my attendance for lectures um as well as sort of friendship meetings and that sort of thing but um I know for certain now that I've definitely got friendship groups and friends that know that when I don't attend something, be that a lecture or a sort of just casual event with friends, that there's reasoning and they don't push that, they don't force me. And yeah, I'd advise sort of getting, focusing on getting those sort of friends that don't push your boundaries and keep you comfortable, keep you in sort of places that are safe uh, for you. Um, how do I get over anxiety? That, this is always going to be a tricky one because it, it it's obviously it's both situational and personal to you. Um, I put a lot of emphasis on you then, didn't I? No, it it it, it depends on the situation and the person. Uh, personally, for me, um, like I just mentioned, the friendship thing, as Aristotle cliche cliche said, um, cliche clichely. In a cliche manner, Aristotle said that a friend is a second self. And it's definitely very true. Um, after finding friends, um, friends, and there aren't, there aren't many uh, people that I've personally found like it, but it doesn't matter as long as there's one, two, three, however many, that know your limits, they know your boundaries, they know what's good for you, what's bad for you, they know what your triggers are. And basically people that you can be open with. Because if you get those people, um, 
then they're certainly going to aid with feeling better about anxiety if for example you're in a situation where a trigger arises and you you're with one of those friends or one of those people they know they will then know that's a trigger for you um, they can look out for you they can either take you away from the situation or um, implement something that's going to help the situation so yeah I know it's not always easy to to fully just open up and uh, you know wear your heart on your sleeve to uh, people and um, from experience I can say that there has been some level of I, I guess rejection yeah after opening up and sort of whatnot but you can usually tell with your friends their traits whether they're the type of person to not yeah reject you being open with them and you know and it's it's understandable in some cases some people um don't know how to handle you being open with them you saying uh, these are my issues and whatnot and that's absolutely fine people have different you know pe people react differently to things and that's not necessarily a bad thing if someone if what well, if a friend or someone can't handle it well it's not can't handle it is it it's um it just sort of reacts badly to it, i guess uh, but it's fine it's it's up to different people how they interpret and feel about things and that's fine but yeah going back to the main point um getting that friend friends that knows you and they know what's good for you they know what your triggers are and what your limits are um but as well as anxiety, taking those baby steps to lay the groundwork to get yourself into situations that you feel comfortable in. Um, anxiety and mental health is a sort of somewhat a lot different to phobias, um, where you have sort of the idea with phobias that jumping into the deep end, as the saying says, uh, could help you overcome um, your phobia. Whereas anxiety, I would advise nine times out of ten. Don't dive in at the deep end. Um, lay the groundwork. Take the baby steps to get yourself into that situation. Uh, try and find that friend that is supportive um, in those situations, and go from there and see how see how that feels. Uh, and the third and last question is uh, how to deal with losing someone due to their mental health problems. Uh, first and foremost, um, I would just like to give my condolences for this. Um, it's always going to be a tender subject and I am profusely sorry that you've had to experience going through this um, in relation especially to mental health. Um, it's very tricky, it's very tender. Um, so I'd just like to apologise in advance if something I say does hit a nerve or, or, or something. I'll try, I'll, I'm will try. i trying to be as amicable as I can. Um, but yeah, how to deal with someone losing someone due to their mental health um it's always going to be a struggle and it's always going to be a struggle to talk about well it's not always going to be a struggle to talk about it but it seems a struggle to talk about it um but something i've i personally found when going through the same sort of thing um with all the sort of family loss i've had is sometimes just like i said in one of my blog posts sitting down opening a window getting some fresh air in just sort of closing your eyes excuse me closing your eyes uh, trying trying to clear your mind and just get a piece of paper uh, get a pen or a pencil a quill um yeah and just sort of just have if I have a calm thing to yourself when your mind's clear about the good times with them um because it's often very easy to get overwhelmed by the negativity and the, the feeling of loss when there is a loss of life in your life but yeah, get get the piece of paper, write the good times, anything from we laughed at this to we went on holiday, X, Y, Z, and get those thoughts onto paper, make make them real, make it a list that you can read um, late at night when you might be struggling, struggling to sleep because of bad thoughts or that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, as, as well as sort of writing about it, talking about it, of course, I naturally always um, advise, whether that's a friend, a colleague, a teacher, etc etc um talk about it experience like grieve with other people that's something that certainly does help as well talk to your family about how you feel um talk to your friends about how you feel because during such a hard period whether it was a year ago a month ago a week ago 10 years ago um always always talking about it is always definitely the go-to um yeah